What's up bloggers? Welcome back to another awesome video about how you can set up the perfect homepage for your blog. Why does your homepage matter? Having a great homepage is absolutely essential to making a long lasting impression on your readers. Your homepage is the first page your readers will encounter when visiting your site. So it's really, really important that you convey your message in the most effective way possible. A great homepage will draw the reader in and make them want to explore the rest of your pages on your website. It should be easy to navigate so your visitors can easily find what they're looking for. If you're looking to set up the perfect homepage, then I've got some tips for you. One of the most important things is to determine who your website is for. This is a really, really important step and a lot of people actually don't even do this. You need to figure out who is your target audience? What is your blog about? What is your niche? These factors are really, really important to keep in mind. This is because you will tailor your homepage to your actual target audience, meaning they'll stay on your page for a lot longer and they're more likely to click on other blogs within your homepage. For example, say we have a blog that's all about health and wellness topics. My target audience would be people of all ages who have an interest in improving their physical or mental health. I would want to make sure that I'm writing about subjects that interest these people, such as nutrition, exercise, mental health, sleep, and mindfulness. One of my clear goals will be creating a community for people to come and find the resources that they need to achieve their goals. This majorly affects how I choose to set up my homepage to give them the best results in the fastest amount of time possible. This brings me on to my next step, choosing the right blog theme and choosing the right layout for your blog. When choosing the right theme for your blog, it's important to consider the overall look and feel for your entire site. You want to ensure that the design is modern, professional, and appealing to your visitors. I can't stress how important this next step is. The layout needs to be easy to navigate allowing readers to access or find the content that they actually need to find in the fastest amount of time possible. They don't want to be clicking 10 times to find the article they're looking for. It should be two, maximum three clicks away. Consider the colors, the fonts, the graphics you are using, as these will have a huge impact on how users interact with your site. Now, what theme do I suggest you try? I actually suggest you try out the popcorn theme. It's a theme that's designed for bloggers in mind. It automatically creates your entire website for you and then you literally just have to change the templates to suit your specific site needs. This means that as bloggers you can get to what's important which is actually just blogging about what you're trying to blog about and making money from your blog. After all why waste time dealing with all these random themes with dodgy business practices where they draw you in with this is free and then there's extra microtransactions and shady business dealings to make you unlock extra features. Why deal with that? In my opinion, using popcorn theme is the best way to go. It costs you $99, but don't worry if you use code BOPOP, then you'll get $15 off. My link is in the description, so feel free to check that out. Whenever I set up a new site, it usually takes me around 20 to 25 minutes maximum to get everything looking how I like it to look. There's not a lot of messing around, dealing with this or that. Because Popcorn's already set it all up for me, I can quite literally just go in, make sure the Popcorn theme's installed and updated, then just change all the templates to what it is I want to display. I've got Popcorn set up on six sites currently, and I'm going to use it for every site that I set up in the future. The beauty is you buy it once and you've got it as many times as you need it. Some essential homepage features would include things like a featured logo, a tagline, and a navigation menu. A good homepage should definitely include some sort of search bar so that if for any reason your readers or visitors can't actually access everything from the menu, they can actually find it from just searching what they want to find. This empowers the reader to make their own decisions and feel like they can have some faith in your website to provide what it is they're looking for. Sometimes users don't want to deal with a navigation bar. Sometimes they just want to search for what they want and have it pop up. This is why it's really, really good to have a search bar on your website. A featured image is a really good thing for you to use on your site. Making sure that it's a picture that's relevant to your niche is super, super important. If it's a site about health and wellness, make sure 
It is someone who is enjoying health and wellness, not just a picture of a scales or something like that. Make sure it's something that is actually going to make the user have an emotional feeling when they see that. That is a really, really important thing to do when you're setting your header. Users will see this picture first. When they look on the website, they won't see just your logo and all the navigation menu items and all that. They'll be looking straight at your hero. So this image really needs to stand out and invoke some sort of emotional response in your audience members. And as a result of that emotional response, they'll more likely interact with your call to action. A call to action will encourage them to explore the page further or potentially purchase something, whatever it is you're trying to get out of your site. Some people set this up to do things like capture emails so they can send emails out to their users. Some people just offer free downloadable products for their users to check out. Either way, you're getting something out of it and having a good hero image will really, really help. A lot of businesses make the terrible mistake of making it something really boring, like a picture of a building or something prof uh, overly professional. That's nothing to do with their niche. Make sure it's a picture that actually invokes some sort of emotional response. This will definitely make the reader stay on your page for longer. Highlighting the best posts on your website with the featured images is a really good idea to keep your users reading your blog. Featured posts can draw attention to pieces of content that you want to highlight. This can be a great way to bring attention to content that is particularly useful or interesting or to showcase content that is perhaps more recent or relevant to the current news of today. Featuring posts on your website makes it just easier for visitors to find the content they're looking for. With user retention going further down with the introduction of YouTube Shorts and TikTok and all these things, People want to be able to find what they're looking for very quickly and very easily. So it's important as a result that your featured posts are relevant to what they want to see, not what you want them to see, what they are looking for. If it's a site about health and wellness, don't put featuring posts in there that you want them to see, put feature posts that they want to see. This will definitely increase the likelihood that they'll stay and interact with your site. There's a certain level of trustworthiness that allows them to want to stay around and read more articles. If you're trying to shove your message down their throat, they might recoil and not want to interact with this site anymore. Featuring posts on your site can establish your site as a good authority in this specific subject. That's why it's so important to choose a niche and to run with that niche. As a visitor, when you go to a site, you'll always know that that featured post is the most important post to you and it's worth exploring. This next one is something I struggled to understand when I first started blogging, and that is creating a clear call to action. Try to figure out what you want your call of action to be. Do you want to collect emails? Do you want to sell a product? Do you want them to read more of your blogs? Do you want them to check out your product reviews? What is it you actually want to achieve with that call to action? Are you perhaps over optimizing your call to action? Do you have two or three or four calls of action? Maybe that's too much. Maybe you just need one call to action. Figure out what your call to action is going to be and then prioritize that as your singular call to action. This will drive more traffic towards that call to action and encourage people to actually interact with your site rather than just visit it. When creating your call to action, make sure that you use really simple and easy to read language. It should be simple and straightforward. Make sure your message is really clear. I highly advise using things like a button to draw attention to that call to action. This will definitely incite more people to click on it rather than just see it. Put your call to action on your main hero image. This will definitely make people see it when they actually just look at the really nice image on your site. Make sure you track how your call to action is performing. You can use things like Google Search Console or Google Analytics to find out this useful information. Optimizing your homepage for search engine optimization, SEO. In addition to optimizing the content of your homepage, it's important to use effective page titles so that your users know exactly what they're clicking. Your titles should include keywords that are topics within your niche that people will be interested in actually reading. This will really, really help search engines understand what your content is all about. And as a result, 
you're definitely going to rank a lot higher. If your site is all about health and wellness, why doesn't your blog say blog health and wellness blog? A lot of people will leave really simple words to describe something that isn't quite simple. If it's a blog about tennis, why is it called blog? Why is it not called tennis blog? By retitling your pages to things that are relevant to your niche, you are allowing Google to understand your site that much better. Changing your meta tags and your descriptions on your homepage will just generally help your site be better optimized for the Google search rankings. At the end of the day, we want these little robots to come into our website and crawl our information so that it's displayed on all the search engines out there. Testing and analyzing your homepage's performance. Once the initial performance tests have been completed, it's important to analyze the results of the tests. This can be done by just looking at the data and identifying areas that need improved. Additionally, it's really important that you determine what parts of your site aren't functioning right and then figure out ways to improve them. Using Google Search Console, you can see how people are interacting with your site and then identify ways that you could potentially improve this. Make sure you're checking your analytics regularly to understand how users are interacting with your site. A poorly optimized site with great information will not get as many views as they can if they had an optimized site. Ultimately, the goal is to provide your users and readers the best possible user experience to keep them reading more and more of your posts and potentially coming back to read your future posts as well. So to recap, a great homepage should be both informative and visually appealing. It should be easy to navigate and should have a clear call to action. By following the tips I've shared in this video, you can ensure that your homepage is set up to fulfill and meet all of the correct criteria. Be sure to test your homepage with real users to get feedback on how to make things better. Ask a friend, ask a family member. Maybe they've got opinions on things they like or dislike about your site that could really, really help you. Remember to be objective about listening to their feedback and not emotional because at the end of the day, people won't give you honest feedback if they feel like you're going to be argumentative about the feedback they're giving you. With the right design and content, your homepage can be set up perfectly to provide the best user experience to your visitors. I really hope this video helped you. If it did, remember to hit that like button and consider checking out some of my other awesome content all to do with blogging and YouTube. This is Theo Ramwell and I'll see you in the next video.